Hey guys, it's Andy, back again for another Five Nights at Freddy's video. And holy cow, look at your calendars, guys, because today is one special date. Friday the 13th in October? It doesn't get much better than that. Let's just hope Scott takes advantage of this super awesome spooky day and gives us a little update on things he's up to. And if you're looking for fun things to do today to celebrate, go check out your local haunted house or hay maze. Just like last year, I'm working at one again, and that's the exact reason why my voice sounds so off. Screaming for days tends to do that to ya. Now let's get into the meat of this video here. Today we're going to be looking at some merch that I honestly thought was bootleg, by the way it looked. But as we all know, looks can be deceiving. The company in question today is known as Good Stuff. But while doing a bit of research, I found out that, for the most part, Good Stuff doesn't produce very good stuff. For instance, here's a picture of the YouTuber DJ Sturf showing off his Good Stuff Foxy plush. Notice anything off about this thing? Yeah, and I used to think Funko's eyes were pushing it sometimes. Good Stuff doesn't push the limits, guys. It owns it. But these Good Stuff plushies aren't what I'm talking about today, as they just seem to be Good Stuff's version of the same plushies everyone else is making. Today I'm going to be talking about these things. Seemingly Good Stuff's own creations, their own stylistic versions of the beloved FNAF 1 characters. So without any further ado, let's take a look at them one at a time, starting with our pal, Freddy. Now right off the bat, I'm sure you're as utterly shocked as I am about his head-to-body ratio. I mean, my word. His body could easily fit in that head. And yes, I did test that theory. <laughs> Back on topic here. Despite the really, really stylistic design, this plushie is at least accurate-ish. I mean, all of his features are there, and nothing is too out of place. They got his lighter coloring in the right spots, though it's way lighter than it probably should be. They made his mouth open, which is an interesting choice, and didn't give him upper teeth, which is good. Now there's this weird feature also, the lines on his mouth, which looks like a failed attempt at making him look like a ventriloquist dummy. It's hard for me to see it that way, though. It's just like he drooled on both sides of his mouth or something. One thing I do give props to are the eye designs. It's simple and actually kind of cute. Though Freddy's eyebrows kind of make him look a little bit derpy. The material of this plushie is pretty soft. Definitely not Funko soft, but it's not bad. The overall quality of this plush is basically a carnival toy. Those stuffed animals that look fun and cuddly, but in reality are probably worth 50 cents. The material is thin and feels a little weird, the stuffing is clumpy, and they'll most likely have a hole or two in them by the end of the week. Look at that, he even has a little hanger on his head. I would not be surprised to see these in claw games or at the local fair. Next up, Bonnie. He seems to be suffering from the strange ear mutation that Toy Bonnie has. In the plushy world, there seems to be no good balance. It's either on the top of their heads, or out the sides. And although Freddy's ears seem to be about the right size, Bonnie's are definitely not. Now this plushie also has the lines around his mouth too, but it's quite hard to see. Similar to the lines in his paws. They just made Bonnie too dark of a purplish blue, or whatever the heck that color is called. Now for Chica. This one's colors actually seem pretty on point, and her eyes are more proportionate to her head, whereas Freddy and Bonnie had pretty small eyes. Though her expression is much more difficult to understand. Freddy and Bonnie were both kind of spooky angry, but Chica has worried looking eyebrows, angry eyes, and a happy mouth. I'm not exactly good at math, but I'm willing to bet those added together equals... another expression unknown to man. Still on the topic of Chica's face, what happened to the bottom of her beak? She's like a much uglier version of a Rito from Wind Waker. Last but not least, we have Foxy. Holy cow, buddy, what happened to your face? This is obviously some kind of mistake that was made at the factory, so I won't bash him too much for it. But I will bash him for his really big, wonky-shaped head. Foxy has a pretty normal-shaped head, with little tufts of fur on both sides. He's not Hey Arnold. They also forgot Foxy's freckles. And he doesn't exactly have a crease down his snout. And, once again, his ears seem to be far too small. Like I said earlier about the eye style, I really do like the look they gave them. It's a shame Foxy's was messed up by this sewing error, because I think it looks quite nice. And the detail on Foxy's body is really nice too. They even got his hook on the correct side. Oh, and he actually does have fur on the top of his head. It just likes to hide. 
So as you could probably tell, I didn't really like these plushies. I admire them for trying something new, but the designs probably needed a few more revisions. And it would have helped a lot if the quality was higher. Remember how the new Funko Sister Location plushies had a lot of printed on color? Yeah, well most of these plushies are like that too. It leaves the color not fully saturated, and it's just not as good. Check out Freddy's hand. Looks like there was a fold in the material or something, so not all of it was colored brown. Of course these plushies would have been much better with the high quality materials. And I understand the company was probably going for the cheaper build, so they can be sold at places like fairs or claw games. So really, the moral of the day is, you get what you pay for. And with that, I'm going to be making some Halloween costumes for the plushies I actually like. <laughs>